and for the whole 12 rounds, so I felt like um, I won and won well. Yeah, you, your face is hardly marked. Do you feel like he just wasn't aggressive enough? Who, who? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just feel like he, um, like I said, uh, coming into the fight, he's awkward. He moves very well. He uses the ring quite well. So it was just hard to sort of corner him and catch him. But um, I know I did rock him a few times, but I give him credit for, for his movement. That was good. Frustrating? Frustrating not to get the knockout? Sorry. No, I mean, I was trying for the knockout, maybe I tried too hard, but uh, I guess there's a lot to work on, you know, we're going to absorb this victory, celebrate with the team, and there's a lot to work on going back into, or setting up the next fights, you know, we're going to go back to the gym, the kids will teach me more things, and it's just about learning, getting more experience, and improving all the time. The knockout was the goal the whole time. Yeah. Are you a bit concerned that you might have done a little bit of damage? You wanted to make a, a really spectacular no, I wanted, fight. Here. I wanted to get the knockout, but it's, uh, you know, in boxing, things happen, and... Things might not go the way you want it, so it's just about, uh, like I said, improving and getting better. But I think next time I'll get the knockout, who knows? So you talked about um, targeting the body a lot. Do you feel like you strayed away from that game plan? Yeah, I think I, I sort of um, needed to punch the body more. Just as awkward style, you know, it's uh, just trying to put on the pressure and chase him down. But I said, um, again, I said credit to him for his movement. It was good. Did you think it was tight? Kevin, I'm going to say this to you. Did you think it was tight? I mean, there was a lot of talking going on in the corner there. Oh, look, I thought it was a close fight. You know, I yeah. thought we had won. I, you know, uh, Joe came forward, he landed the bigger punches. Look, let's remember, at the press conference I said that I believe that Huey Fury was the most awkward guy here in the UK and there's a reason why he's undefeated and there's a reason why people don't fight him. He's, you know, he's a very good boxer, but you can't win a fight if you're going backwards for 12 rounds. You know, Joe was the aggressor, he landed the power punches. In fact, you know, there were two or three times in the fight where he could have closed the, could have finished the night. But I think he was just, he got a little frustrated with uh, Huey's movement. Were you getting a little frustrated there as well? Because there was a, there was a few calls that he, he was holding, Huey was holding. Well, you know, I, I, I talked to uh, Marcus, the referee, and I was a little, little annoyed that he let him hold as much as he did. You know, I would have liked him to take a point off. Because one thing that Huey Fury does do really, really well is survive. And he's very good at wrapping and tying up. The only thing I was concerned about, he hit Joe in the back repeatedly, oh, yeah. and also his head was getting very close to Joe's head. Um, so, yeah, they were concerns for me. What have you learned, I mean, what, Joe, what have you learned? I mean, as you said, one of the most awkward fights you've ever had. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to take from this fight. Uh, just got to keep moving it. I mean, working on things that I you know, showed weakness in, in the ring today. But um, we did a lot of things good. I think we want to focus on the positives, focus on the win, celebrate with the team. Are happy with your fitness, so Joe? My fitness is good, but I've got another six, 12 rounds. So. Right, and uh, the fast start that you wanted, Kevin, is that, are you happy with that fast start? You know, I think actually Joe landed a couple of really good punches in the first round that uh, set, the, set the scene for the fight. Huey realised that he couldn't stand there with Joe. He had to move a lot. If he was going to survive, and, and that's what he did. He moved non stop for 12 rounds. And what does this mean? You're a guy who hasn't fought for two years. Uh, we, we were, you were looking for the knockout, that didn't come. Um, what does that mean in terms of going forward? Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means that we just came uh, halfway across the world to Manchester and we one. fought an undefeated fighter who was 20 and 0, who was a world amateur champion, that's the main thing. a fighter that other people do not want to fight, and we fought him in his backyard. And we beat him convincingly on two judges, and we had a draw on the other judge. So I think it's a pretty damn good performance. Big and What this does now is this sets the scene for us moving forward yeah. to doing business here in the UK. Well, how do you think the fight will be received uh, by the British critics here? I, I don't know, mate. I don't know how the British critics <laughs> think. How's the fight been received I'll by tell the you New Zealand critics? Yeah, no, I mean we're all happy, obviously. But you, you come here to make a mark. You, do you feel like that performance has, has achieved that? Look, there are a lot of people who thought that Huey was going to outbox Joe. Mm. A lot of boxers. You know, David Hay thought. You know, he, he thought that Huey would outbox us. Tyson said to me, yeah, "I think you know, I, I really like Joe." He said, "But Huey's a very good boxer." People can't outbox you. You know, we, we won convincingly on two, on two international judges' cards. So yeah, I think it, I British think it, card too. Yes. Yeah. I think it has to be received very well. Joe, um, Kevin talked about your, your maturity that he felt that you've really grown in the last six months, but it is, it's another step up that you had to take after all the other fights that you've had. Do you feel that you've made that big jump in this fight? I feel uh, the jump was, uh, I wasn't, no, I haven't made that jump yet. I feel like I you know, improved a lot from you know, what, you know, the last fight, but there's still a lot to work on. So I'm excited about the improvements that I've made, but I'm more excited about what's to come and what I can keep learning and improving on and getting better on. Joe, well done on your uh, victory. Two questions for you, but um, he caught, Huey caught you with a few uppercuts as well. Yeah. Uh, did he hurt you at all? And then obviously you caught him with some big shots. Was you surprised by his uh, punch resistance? 
Um, you know, he, he called me um, some shots coming in, so mm -hmm. you know, I just needed uh, to uh, work on my movement more. Mm -hmm. Like Kevin suggested, in between rounds, he didn't really hurt me. I don't think he, you know, he's got good fast hands, he moves up, I don't think he has a lot of power. Um, I think I caught him with some good shots, and um, credit to him for you know, dodging the other big shots that came his way. Yeah. Joe, it was feisty in the, in the way, and what was said after the, after the match? I just said, you know, thanks for the great fight. Um, I can do it again sometime in the future, but... Um, well done on coming in and putting on a great show. On yeah, behalf of the British backyard. public, well done. Thank yeah. you. David, you've got to move this sort of forward now. I mean, what, what's your summation of the performance and how, do, how does that sort of uh, position you going forward? I think that everything was against us heading in um, and it, Huey was ex incredibly tricky. He moved very slickly on his feet for a man that size and mm. tucked his shoulder and, and he wasn't looking for the knockout or the and moving back, it's hard to knock a guy like that out. So I'm just relieved we got the win. Like Kevin said, I thought it was close. Um, I think I should pay credit to the British Boxing Board of Control because I think they were pretty straight in this case. So credit where it's due. Um, next steps, it's exciting. You know, if we if we take in a loss, it's back to the drawing board in some ways. But you know, uh, promotionally, it's exciting. The world is our oyster now because we have a voluntary, not a mandatory, which means instead of being forced into a, one fight, we can negotiate multiple deals at the same time and on our terms. And uh, Kevin and I are looking at options as far afield as Japan. No Japanese heavyweight has ever fought for the heavyweight world title in Tokyo. And there's, you know, our promotional partner Bob Arum in the United States with his new ESPN deal. So the world is our oyster, and Kevin and I will have a lot of work analysing the next couple of weeks, and we'd like to get back in the ring again pretty quickly, maybe even before the end of the year. Dillian White's already called Joe out on Twitter. Is he someone you look at fighting as a voluntary? Oh, we, we look, it's all risk return. We look at everyone. Dillian White calls everyone out every week, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, how are you going to celebrate tonight? Uh, first, you're going to do this drug test, get that out of the way, and then uh, just you know, relax with the team. You know, it's, uh, it's not just uh, efforts from myself, it's efforts from all the team. And there's a lot of people that travel here to watch me fight and support me. You know, people from New Zealand, Vegas, uh, Hong Kong. So we're going to get together as a team, celebrate and enjoy the night. How did, it, how did it feel to feel that fight in front of a foreign crowd for a change? It's exciting. It's exciting because it's something new. And you're gonna, you know, they're cheering for him, so you, you really want to make a, a big upset. So. Joe, are you... Uh, you said you were interested sorry. in staying in London and basing yourself there. Any changes on that? Um, I meant basing myself here in terms of finding more here, you know, because of the heavyweight scene. But uh, we have a great setup in Vegas, so I'm happy with our own gym. Um, you know, I live back home in New Zealand where my family is, so I think I want to spend more time here fighting-wise. So so I was, was going to ask you crack something. at um, Eddie Hearn during the week. Will you be giving him a ring now to try and take the fight? <laughs> well, I didn't really have a crack. I just pointed out that he didn't. He reneged on meeting the group, and um, that um, you know, it's a, it's a business, and um, he's been around a long time. I don't think. I'm just going to delete my phone number. It's, um, <laughs> the, it, what, if the deal makes sense, the fight will happen. So will you be calling him in the next well, couple of days? Well, we'll reach out, but you know, th there's actually some other options. A lot of his guys that we look at are tied up towards the end of the year. So Kevin and I have some other exciting options that we're looking at. Is that, is that um, the Hay uh, value fight, has that kind of forced you to maybe look further afield? Uh, not well. We have to look further afield, but further afield could be a better option than Balu, and you know we could then look at the winner of Hey Balu in the new year. How are your parents holding up, Joe? You, you put them through the ring on that fight. <laughs> My parents are good. You know they um, they trust the work that Kevin and I have put into training camps, and they trust that we're well prepared. So whatever the result, they're happy with as long as they know that we've worked hard. You know, so you Joe, are you going to stick around in the UK or are you going to come back for the Pulev and Joshua fight as well? Uh, I think I'm going to go home. I, I've been away from home, from home for a long time now. I have to go see my daughter, see my family, see my friends and you know, maybe come back. But I think uh, we need a bit of a break now. Sure. Enjoy some burgers and pizza. <laughs> so when the 118-110 scorecards were written, uh, read out 